and look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we thank you today for this privilege that we have to be gathered together in the house of God. We've come to worship you today, Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords. This day is all about you, Lord. We worship you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you that there is no God like our God. We thank you, Lord, that we can put all of our care and our worries and our needs in your big hands. And you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever hope, think, or imagine. Lord, I pray that you would undertake in the lives of those who are sick today, family members and friends, Lord, who need a special outpouring of your spirit today, who need a touch from you today, I pray that they would sense the power of God moving in their lives. Father, I pray that you would draw us closer to you, make our lives more like you, reflective of you. When we come into difficult situations and troubles and trials, we want to show the world what faith is all about. We want them to see that there is an answer and it's in Jesus today. And so, Lord, I pray that you would have your way. Move mightily in our midst. Be with those who are online and worshiping with us. I pray that you would go where they are and meet their needs today, Father. Draw them closer to you. For you are awesome and mighty and powerful. And we bless your wonderful name. We give you thanks. We give you honor. Make us the sanctuary you want us to be. Pure and holy. One that you can inhabit, Lord. Move in our lives, we pray. And Father, all that you do for us, we'll be careful to give to you all the glory and the honor that is due your lovely name. So we pray these things in that name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray. He said, when you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And to give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Would you affirm your faith with me again today? I think it's so important in this season of Pentecost that we remember that we believe. And read with me if you would. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his son, our, sorry, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, we have much to preach, God, now. Would you stand with me, please? And let's sing the doxology together.
Shake hands with everybody you can. Tell them it's good to see them today. God bless you.
up there. I don't know if I'm going to sing it, but I want you to see there's a part that says there in the middle, when one has a heartache, we all share the tears. And we do. And we rejoice in each victory. Well, I'm looking at some victories today. I see some victories right here. If you want to know about God's redeeming power, if you want to know about God's healing power, all you got to do is look right here amongst you. Because it was before last August of 2023 that Diane was able to be in church. And she's been through a low valley, spent months in a nursing home, but God. And she came walking into God's house today. You talking about a miracle, church. That's a miracle. Amen. Praise God. I see miracles. I see new Christians. I got to tell on Kim. Because I never heard it before in my life. Until a few weeks ago we did communion. It was Kim's first communion. Now, Kim's not five years old. It was her first communion. But God came into her heart and her life and changed her and saved her. Set her free. And guess what? When we did communion, she told me that when she took the bread, I was going to tell this at the next communion, but I can't wait. When she took that bread in her hand, she felt her hand begin to move. Hallelujah. And the power of God's Spirit and the body of Jesus Christ coming into her life in a brand new and a marvelous way. That's God, church. That's God. I love to be around baby Christians, amen. I'll take them any day instead of an old dead one. I'm glad an old dead one's saved, but they need to get glorified and move on and get some life back in them, amen. Amen. Y'all all right out there?
see Kathy here today and your kids. Great to have you all. It's wonderful to have them here. And I, I haven't said a lot about another miracle that I see back on the back row most Sundays, but that's a miracle. Because a few years ago, I think in 2019, well, the Lord decided to take two people home. A man named Scott and a lady named Wendy. But God put two people back to put them together in Donnie and Melissa. You're talking about a miracle, folks. God heals hearts. He's the healer of our broken hearts. And he restores. What the devil wants to take away, God wants to restore it. Amen. Amen. They're living proof of that. And they're serving God. Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I think I need to go on vacation more often. <laughs> that was the fastest three days I think I ever lived. But I did get my impetus in leaving for that trip was primarily to be able to see Bishop Leon Stewart, who is the and my understanding still at 94, the only living former general superintendent of the Pentecostal Holiness Church. And Bishop Stewart is uh, still a wonderful man of God. His mind is just still very clear. He was here and preached for us. Many of you will remember in 2017. And um, he is uh, uh, just an incredible man. He he. He's blind and traveled the world blind as a general superintendent. But he reads every day. He has a little machine right beside him that reads to him. He scans what he wants to read and puts it there. And he told me the other day, he prayed over Dana and I in such an awesome time. And he said, Byron, I'm learning every day. And he said, in fact, recently I've even changed my theology a little bit. Isn't that something to still be honing on your theology at 94? Amen. He's not giving up. And I thank God for that dear man. Well, we're going to ask our ushers to come and wait upon us this morning for the Lord's tithes and our offerings. I know you had a blessed time with Brother Dabby Dean. It's always a blessing for him to be able to come and be with us. And I know he shared with you the story of his church. But God knew what was coming Amen. and provided for Brother Dabedine to where he's booked solid through the summer. Amen. And so continue to pray for Brother Dabedine and the people that used to be of the, of the uh, Cornerstone Church, not Cornerstone, Centerpoint. Centerpoint, thank you. Centerpoint Church in Birmingham. And... Uh, so pray that God will continue to meet the needs. Brother Clyde, would you pray for us? Thank you, Father, for this day, for this time that we can be here and we can gather here. Thank you for your blessing, your presence with us today. We pray that you will bless this offering. We thank you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.
great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee.
Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, praise God. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. God is here. And as we sang earlier, we are standing on holy ground. Amen. Praise his name. This is, of course, Memorial Weekend, and uh, we want to always pay honor and respect to those who have given, as is said, given their all so that we might enjoy the freedoms that we have today. And we do not take that lightly at all but we do thank all of our military past and present and all those that have served and provided for us this is also what is known as trinity sunday in christianity on the christian calendar trinity sunday and on this Sunday of Trinity Sunday, we celebrate and affirm again the doctrine of the triune Godhead. I don't understand how anybody, and there are many that don't believe in the Trinity. I just don't see where they get that in Scripture. But it is not my place to critique them to correct them, it is my place to preach the gospel according to as God has revealed it unto me. Amen. And I read in Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. I read in this passage of Matthew 28, 16, that the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations, and baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. The Trinity to some is a confusing doctrine. But though it may be hard for us at times to wrap our minds around it, it's because our minds are finite. But God is infinite. But though it may be confusing and hard to understand it all, God in three persons, blessed Trinity, the doctrine helps us to see. Now you will not see the word Trinity, and that doctrine specifically, but we get that from this verse here in 19 and many others. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It helps us to understand because of the work of the Trinity that God is not off somewhere in a distance yonder way leaving us to our own devices. God is a very active participant in our world. God is a very active participant in our lives. Some try to hold God off from their lives and don't want him so much as, so to speak, meddling in their lives. Some look at God as he's some ogre, some parent waiting for you to mess up. You've heard parents say, God's watching you. He sees when you do something wrong, kind of like we say of Santa Claus. 
Somebody sang not a hymn a few years ago of God is watching us from a distance. But can I say to you, God is not so far off as some think that God is. In this mystery surrounding the Trinity, while it makes it hard for some people to understand, God is the Father, God is the Son, and God is the Holy Spirit. We hear that, but we still wonder what does it mean. It's kind of like we approach it like the little first grade boy did. He was uh, looking at this new computer setting on his desk, and all the other children had a, a little computer. We used to get a number two and a, a big chief tablet when I was there, but <laughs> that was our iPad. And... Uh, you only got an iPad if you hurt your eye at school that day. <laughs> but they were looking at their little computers, and this little boy's just staring at it like, what in the world do I do to this thing? How, how can I get it to work? And the teacher walked by, and she said, well, the computer wants to know your name. So she moved on to talk to other children, and she thought surely the little boy would understand that he's too type his name into the computer. But the little boy in his mysterious way, very concerned about this computer, leaned up to the computer and said, my name is David. And sometimes that's how we approach the Trinity, with a sense of mystery. Perhaps we've tried to explain it, this uh, wonderful ancient doctrine but yet have failed to step back in worship and in awe of the triune Godhead that loves us, is involved in our lives, and has a plan for us. We need to understand that uh, through the Trinity, we see that God is no longer hidden from us. He's not inaccessible. For we see him as creator. We see him in the life of Jesus of Nazareth. And we can also experience him through the power of his indwelling Holy Spirit. But our God who seemed in other times and places to be at a distance is now very much real and available to all of us. But as we think about the Trinity... I want you to stop and pause and think with me for a moment about a fourth person in the Trinity. Let me start with a story. A pastor named Ron Delbean, he tells about the early days in his ministry when he was responsible for the Sunday school program of his church. And each Sunday morning he would go from class to class and speak to the children, talk to them, read a Bible lesson to them, and then he would go to the next class and the teacher would continue to teach that lesson that they had just heard. The children enjoyed having him come in week after week. And uh, the church was so designed, you've seen these kind of buildings, to where the classrooms opened up to the outside. It had large windows lining the walls, and the children could see Pastor Ron walking down the, the, the walkway coming to their class. And one uh, Sunday, as he was walking into a particular classroom, one of the little boys looked out the window and said, Here comes Jesus. Get ready. <laughs> well, he kind of laughed about that at the moment, but after a little while, he, he got troubled about that. Because he began to think, do these children think that I am Jesus? So he talked to one of his colleagues, and he, his colleague said, well, what is it like? Describe your time in the classroom. He says, well, he said, I go in, and I sit down in a chair, and sometimes two or three of them sit up on my lap, and I tell the story, and his colleague said, aha. Uh -huh. He began to tell him that that's just like Jesus did brought the children unto him, let the children come. And he says, uh, what do you wear? He says, well, I always wear my, my white pulpit robe. And 
he did have a beard. Well, hello. <laughs> Maybe they're going to think Jesus used to come into my classroom on Sundays. But what he gained from that experience was, he said, I began to look deeper into my own life and I began to ask myself and the Lord, what am I doing to not just look like Jesus, but what am I doing to be more like Jesus every day so that people will see Jesus through me? What a great way to examine our lives, but to ask, what am I doing every day to be more like Jesus? That's a question we ought to honestly look at and consider. The fourth person of the Trinity. Not wanting to sound like a heretic, but I want to suggest to you today that the fourth person of the Trinity is you. Every believer, every child of God is a part of the triune Godhead. Because all evangelistic endeavors, every time we share our faith, every time we tell our story to someone, every time we witness about Jesus Christ, the word becomes flesh and that flesh is our flesh. God works through us, and sometimes some people are never going to experience Jesus Christ until they see him at work in your life first. So it takes us back to that question, what am I doing every day to make me more like Jesus so that I will honor God and be used of God? God wants to come alive in those moments as we share our faith and talk to others about Jesus Christ, it becomes an incarnational moment. That's why Jesus commanded his disciples here in Matthew 28 and verse 19 to go and preach the gospel in every land. That was always the plan of God to reveal himself to human creatures through his people. God could have written his message in the sky. Instead, God chose to write his message on our hearts. Amen. And we are his tools. We are his instruments. We are his servants that will go and be used of Jesus so that the world can see Christ living through us. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verses 2 to 3, it says the only letter of recommendation we need is you yourselves. Your lives are a letter written in our hearts, and everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. Clearly, it says, you are a letter from Christ, showing the result of our ministry among you, this letter is written not with pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not carved on tablets of stone, but on our human hearts. Amen. So every effort towards evangelism, every time we stand as a representative and ambassador of Jesus Christ, God is there in the midst of that moment, He's made flesh in us, and through our lives, other people see God clearer. You've heard that said. Your life is the only Bible that some people will ever read. And indeed, that is true. We are representatives, and how do we represent God? What are we doing to make ourselves more like God? At church one evening in her hometown in Sweden, Ingrid Waddell heard a voice speak to her. At first she tried to ignore that voice and just tried to concentrate on the worship service, but the voice kept getting stronger and speaking to her, and it was specific. The voice said to her, go down to the harbor. 
Well, Ingrid just tried to dismiss that notion, telling herself, excusing herself, that the harbor was the roughest part of town. She would not be safe going there at night. She imagined all kind of evil and wickedness down there amongst the deserted docks in the evening hours. She said, there's no way I'm going down to that dock. She continued to squirm in her pew. Don't you know the Holy Spirit won't turn you loose? Amen. The service finally ended. She hurried home as fast as she could, trying to distance herself from that message, that voice that was speaking to her, go down to the harbor. She got home. She actually slammed the door when she got inside, trying to get away from that mysterious voice. The voice was gone. A month later, she was in that service again, and the voice came back. Go down to the harbor tonight. Well, now she's beginning to get curious. She wondered if perhaps that voice was of God. And there was an elderly couple, though, that lived near her who attended the same church. So she went to see them and talked to them about the voice that she heard. The elderly gentleman agreed that surely she needed to act on what she was hearing and that he would go with her to the dock. And she said that she found herself there in the docks and she was amongst people of differing levels of intoxication. And she said, I found myself talking just as fast as my English permitted me to about how I had found a new life in Jesus and I had turned my life over to Christ and he had come into my heart and forgave me. And she said, as I was rattling off just as fast as I could, there was a, a sound behind me. And she turned around to look behind her and there stood a tall gentleman who was obviously very intoxicated and holding the empty bottle in his hand but he was standing there listening to her witness and tell about Jesus Christ. He said, 10 dirty years, I have gone away from God. For once I had walked with God, but he said, I have run away from God and, and been down here and living against God. Everyone in the room grew very quiet and listened. Well, Ingrid began to pray for guidance and she felt like the Lord wanted her to say it. And she said to the man, will you go to church with me? She said, if I come and pick you up, would you go to church with me? And she said he had the nastiest stinking clothes on. But she said she came there at 8 o'clock. And there was this man, now, clean shaved, bathed clean clothes. And he got in a car and together they went to church. And an altar call was given. And they all began to pray. And Ingrid invited this man. She said, some of us are going to go to another part of the church and we're going to pray for quite a while. Would you like to come? He said, I would. And she said, it wasn't too long that you could begin to sense an inner light radiating from this man. And you could sense that he now had a new settled peace in his soul. The inner light was the spirit of the living God. For the word had become flesh in that moment. For what a tremendous privilege it is, my friends, that we have to help somebody experience life transformation. We have the message. We have the love of Jesus Christ. We have his commission given to us to go make disciples. It's the greatest privilege. It's given to us by Jesus in this great commission. We can be the incarnation of God's Holy Spirit. Not in the same way that Christ was incarnated of the Spirit. But in the same way, we are, we are uniquely involved and partnered together with the Spirit. 
But oh, how many times we pass those precious opportunities. I like to call them divine appointments that God puts us in. God opens doors. God opens avenues. God opens situations and puts us near people that need to hear about Jesus Christ. Amen. They don't need to hear, you wretched sinner, you're headed to hell. They need to hear, Jesus loves me, this I know, Amen. for the Bible tells me so. Amen. 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 And here's the best part. As we seek to live the Christ life, with his Holy Spirit dwelling in us, he grants us his strength and his power. There's nothing God will call you to do. There's no one God will call you to speak to that he leaves you out to your own self. But his spirit is right there with you, Amen. empowering you, Amen. filling your mind and your mouth with his words. Amen. You'll say, I didn't know that. Well, as God gave it to you. It's a divine inspiration. Christ is in us, the hope of glory. Empowered by the Spirit of God. Acts 1.8 says, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be, not that you might be, not that you should be, you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That means at home, beyond, even in unwelcomed places. Amen. Even in unwelcomed places. What are we doing to become more like Jesus? So that we fulfill our part of the fourth person of the Trinity. Because God is only going to work through his people. He gave us a mouth, a heart, hands, feet to go, to touch, to bless, to speak to others about Jesus Christ. And to tell them that God is no longer at a distance. God is near. We see him as creator. We see him in the life of Christ. We experience him as the holy comforter. And who is the fourth person in the Trinity? God wants us involved. Amen. God calls us to be involved. Our commission to us is go make disciples. There's no requirement for a religion degree, aren't you glad? Amen. There's no requirement for a seminary education, aren't you glad? Amen. You don't need a seminary education. You don't need to be a, a pastor. You are the minister. You are the fourth person. Amen. God creates, God saves, God fills, and God uses. People just like you and just like me to go make disciples, baptize them, and teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And guess what? Lo, that's not L O W, but behold, I'm with you always. Amen. You'll never have to go it alone. You are his ambassador. You carry the spirit of the living God everywhere you go. You are his representative, his tool, his instrument to reach a lost and a needy world. You're part of the plan for taking the message of the Trinity to everyone. But we have to ask, what am I doing? How am I doing at becoming more like the Christ I represent? Go make disciples until the whole world knows. Amen. And lo, I'm with you always. Would you pray with me?
Father, today we thank you that you call us and use us to be the tools in your hands. The fourth person of the Trinity, doing the will of God, the bidding of God, the work of God, to win the lost at any cost. God, go with us, use us, make us your tools, make us vessels, willing vessels to be used of God till all men know that Jesus came to save us. Lord, I pray that you'll use us, fill us, empower us, fashion us, mold us the way you want us to be, that ultimately my life, our life, will glorify God in all that we do. Would you stand together with me? to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. In Christ's name, amen and amen. Thanks for being here today. God bless you. Glorify thy name.